Hello there. So I have some uh, good news, which is that I've recovered from my cold. And I have some just some news, which is that uh, before I go into uh, uh, the continuation of the two playlists on building, the one on Neanderthals and the one on YDNA, which is almost finished, uh, I just wanted to give you an introduction to uh, the races of Europe. So before we talked about the six major races, and I will redo that video at some point because it doesn't have any pictures and I could explain better the differences between cranial types and body types and things. Um, <clears throat> but now I want to talk a little bit about uh, the, the different races in Europe. So there are lots of different, uh, different sub-races. Uh, they're defined slightly differently by different anthropological uh, authors and different anthropology groups uh, on the web. Uh, but there's general consensus about terms uh, in a lot of uh, circles. Um, and the, the skull types can be broadly categorized uh, into five groups. Uh, two, three, oh, two, two dolichocephalic uh, Nordics and Mediterranean uh, with uh, a tendency towards mesencephaly in the current population. Again, I explained these terms before. Uh, dolichocephaly is long skull. Um, like mine, you can see uh, my skull is not uh, is is quite narrow compared to its its length, and then a mesocephal is in between. Brachycephal is uh, short, so uh, the the length is uh, relatively speaking short compared to the width. The width is high. Um, so two dolichocephal types with a modern tendency towards mesocephal mesocephaly. That's nordids and mediterraneans. Uh, one that in its unaltered forms is mostly dolichocephalic, but in its in some of its forms is brachycephalic. That's uh, the Cro-Magnon type, and that's got quite a lot of diversity. That's the original type in Europe, and various variations and mixtures. And then you have uh, two short skull types, uh, the dinneroid and the albinoid. Um, 